But from Sydney this morning, we have Sean Fenton of Tribeca uh, with us on the program. Good to have you back there. Sean, so uh, first off, let me get your thought on uh, Greece, because obviously this is really boosting up currencies right now. Take a look at the uh, moves in the Aussie, in the Kiwi, the Euro bouncing upwards. Uh, what do you think of the headlines coming through that looks like uh, Luca Papademos and the Greek Parliament have voted in favour of these austerity measures? Um, yeah, look, I think we saw <coughs> sorry, a bit of risk off towards the end of last week, and this is just going to bring the rich trade back on. Okay, so it brings the risk trade back on. What does that mean for the uh, trading week, or for the trading day? Does that change your positions at all? Um, look, it sees money flow back into resources, um, economic cyclicals, uh, and away from the defensives, so out of uh, LPTs, out of utilities. Um, but, you know, we're really right in the middle of reporting season right now, so um, stock, you know, specific news is a big driver of the market as well. All right, so what are you closely watching out for this week? Considering we do have this vote to getting through in Greece. Uh, what about the corporate-specific news? Uh, look, at the end of last week, we saw uh, some trading statements from the banks. Uh, uh, NAB was out uh, reporting worse losses in the UK, but um, importantly as well, the RBA didn't move rates, so we saw um, ANZ come out and CBA uh, late on Friday increase their, their mortgage rates. So there's a bit of focus uh, on the market now, looking at uh, can the banks sort of recapture some of the, the funding pressure that went through the market with um, you know, Euro stress through last year? Can they raise rates in an absolute sense without getting a political backlash? So we're starting to, to tease out how much um, pricing power the banks really have. So um, you know, we've got a few more tr quarterly trading statements coming out from the banks. So they'll be in focus um, what's happening to their net, net interest margin and also what's happening on the bad debt front with. Um, so weak, weaker patches of growth going through the, uh, the Aussie economy. Okay, well, uh, don't forget, Sean, we also heard from the RBA's governor, uh, Glenn Stevens, as well, talking about uh, the global slowdown really affecting the Australian economy. In his view, growth should be solid, but uh, you can't, of course, discount what could be shocks to the system. Uh, so what does that mean for the rest of this year, I guess, for the Australian economy, the corporate outlook? And I guess you've got to factor in interest rates, don't you? Yeah, look, we've obviously been through a lot of turmoil in terms of risk expectations, but the Reserve Bank, I think, surprised quite a few in the market by, by not easing policy uh, the other week. And what's really reflected there is a higher tolerance for unemployment. And where we sit at the moment, with China looking like it's making its way through a soft landing and starting to ease a little bit, the medium-term outlook for, uh, for commodities and volumes is improving. So the Reserve Bank's still very much focused on the mining capex boom and how that's going to flow through the economy. Uh, and really being prepared to see weaker growth from a, from a household sense. So the strong A dollar and uh, you know, the lack of a relief there on interest rates, I think, continues to keep pressure on parts of the Aussie economy that are really struggling. So those that are exposed to the export sector, things like steel and aluminium, um, retailers are suffering from, from the weaker household sector and, and deflation across mm -hmm. a lot of their categories, and uh, that's likely to continue um, yeah, right, with so the strength really remaining. Yep. Sean, so what are you doing with your portfolio then? Well, we do see some very encouraging signs out of the US. So you're starting to see uh, you know, employment growth get some more solid momentum. And I think that's uh, uh, likely to feed through the economy more broadly there. So stocks with US exposure, uh, industrial cyclicals uh, we quite like. So uh, things ranging from things like uh, Amcor and Sims Group and News Corp. Um, uh, even into some of the deeper value cyclicals like uh, Qantas and the airline sense, Intertech Pivot, where you've got uh, you know, reasonably low uh, PE multiples on those stocks, but some exposure to, to improved economic activity, steering away from, from those sectors that are still under earnings pressure, so you know, export orientated domestics, retailers, etc., uh, that are unlikely to see much recovery in earnings in the short term. All right, Sean, good talking to you this morning. Sean Fenton, Portfolio Manager, Rebecca Investment Partners, joining us from Sydney this morning.